to this morning. Thank you so much for those kind words. Um, and I know that I have a lot to deliver and I know that your expectations are high. So without further ado, I am going to start sharing my screen and we can begin today's presentation. Great, so I'm seeing that you all are seeing my screen here. So let's begin. So I'm happy to have representatives from, you know, throughout the Caribbean, Guyana, Grenada. I think we have some folks from St. Lucia, and of course we do have um, students from Trinidad and Tobago. So it's, it's, it's always a pleasure to deliver my message to such a wide audience. And I hope that at the end, every single one of you would have learned something and you would have been able to take away some valuable information. So for those of you who don't know, CyberSafeTT, uh, it's a, an, a voluntary organization that I started. This year is actually 10 years that we've, we've, we've been doing these type of talks. Um, on topics of cyberbullying and cyber safety and so on. Um, and, you know, we continue to grow the numbers in terms of how many students and parents and teachers that we would have addressed over the years. And thanks to the Franciscan Institute to help me to add to those numbers. Um, so without any further delay, let's begin our presentation today. And I know Annalisa did a fantastic job of identifying um, presentation etiquette. Uh, but I'll just, you know, run it through here quickly. And I'm sure many of you who are sitting in online virtually, you know, already know some of these rules because I'm sure your teachers would have probably highlighted them to you before. And if there are any teachers in on the session today, um, you can, you will see that I do have some website addresses on some of my slides and that will actually give you access to some of the content that we'll be sharing. So for example, these online classroom rules, I do have them as a, a downloadable PDF um, or an image that you, know, you can share at the beginning of your presentation. So I'm certain that a few of you in the audience here might have learned to swim at some point in time, or you would have liked to learn to swim. And uh, chances are, you know, if you are learning to swim, you might not have started in the deep end of the pool, right? You know, uh, well, at least we would like to hope that you didn't start in the deep end. More than likely, you may have started, you know, somewhere around here in the shallow, where you could have still stood up and, you know, hold your own in the water. Now, more than likely, if you started to learn to swim when you're a little, uh, a little kid, you probably looked something like this. And I think the main reason why is because mom and dad, you know, they were just trying to be the absolute good parents that they are. And they wanted to try to protect you in the best way that they can. And we, we would probably experience a little more protection in, in the upcoming months, particularly with our pandemic that we were experiencing where, you know, we may be forced to, you know, um, take some sort of vaccination to, to help us, you know, uh, keep strong. And as, as Wood says, you know, stay protected from the bad things. And the thing is, our parents and our teachers and our guardians, they, they, they always tend to seek their best interest. And with everything else, you know, there is a time and a place. And we really have the opportunity to, to do quite a lot with the Internet. But the unfortunate thing about it is that sometimes we may not know when and where we should be doing certain things. Now, more than likely, this is a situation that we will not probably see, you know. Uh, this little chap seems to be a little too young to be driving a car. And interestingly enough, do you know that there is an, an age range, for, for, for want of a better word, to actually using some of the very popular apps that I'm sure that you use on a regular basis? Um, I don't know if any of you could put into the chat, you know, what you think that age might be for example, to start using apps like Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram. Yes, there is an age that, that these applications have said that, hey, we would only like to use those apps when you are of a particular age. And for the most part, it's about 13 years to 16 years for some of them. Um, and the thing is, we probably get into utilizing these apps, uh, you know, uh, 
on a regular basis. So much so that I know that we may have some teenagers in the audience today, but I'm sure that we have all screen ages in the audience. And I'm sure we all, we all know what that refers to, right? Because more than likely, we probably would have attended a, a, a birthday party, for example. And I'm sure this is a all too familiar screen, right? Where everyone's face is in the screen. So, you know, we, 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 we are screen agers. Now, I want to share something a little, a, little, a little tricky here. Because even though this might be what you might be, you know, looking like, I, I kind of think it's more like this, you know, because sometimes when we are so focused into that screen, we become zombies, you know, we become numb to everything else that's around us. Um, and that's, you know, kind of a sign that, you know, we might probably have a little bit of addiction to the internet. Um, and interestingly enough, that is a real thing. And all of this is actually going to lead up to, uh, you know, that topic of cyberbullying and social media etiquette. Um, but I want you to get an understanding that, you know, sometimes we may be utilizing the internet a little bit too often and we might suffer from something called infobesity or internet addiction disorder, which is, which is a real thing. Um, and, and I mean, I know that we're all aware that too much of any one thing isn't good. And the same goes for the internet. Yes, there is such a thing. Too much of the internet isn't good. And it can lead to, you know, what is called internet addiction disorder and it is indeed a real disorder and there are certain types of healthcare facilities um, that have been built particularly in the united kingdom to help people reduce their addiction to the internet and it's really interesting because sometimes these applications that you know you use the developers of those applications they build building certain type of um functionality in it to make it you know very very addictive and it's really difficult for someone as young as yourself you know to know whether you're addicted or not so i want to put a few slides going forward and just to bring this to perspective now i'm sure that we can say that too much of this item right is not good for you and i, I i'm guessing most of you might agree also too much of this will probably not be good for you as well uh you know of course you, some of you might disagree here but i am almost certain that every student in the audience would agree with the next slide by saying too much of this is also not good for you as well right I, I'm, I'm certain we're going to have a unanimous decision on that one but here's the thing we also have other elements that might not be good for you because you know we may engage in it a little too much this one might be a little controversial, but I'm sure, you know, some of the guys and girls in the, in, the, in the audience today might think that, hey, there is no such thing as too much Fortnite. Well, you know, maybe there might be because we've seen where students become so engrossed in the applications that they use and the games that they play that they really forget, you know, about regular life routines, things like eating and sleeping and brushing your teeth. Um, and it really can distract you. And this is the frightening thing, because when you're on the device and you're using it so often, you tend to get distracted and you let your guard down. And that's the problem. When you let your guard down, then you may encounter some sort of situation where you can be cyberbullied or you might be the cyberbully, or you may go against some of the social media etiquette rules that we will share later on. So I know we often need our fix um, and, you know, we, we tend to spend a little too much time on the internet. Um, but I want to show you some, 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 some slides that might relate as to whether or not, you know, you are addicted to the internet. And, I, and I'm just going to pause for a few seconds here and I'm going to ask the question. How many of you in the audience here, you know, think that you might be addicted to the internet? And this goes to the, to the adults as well. Um, you know, some of you may say, no, I'm not addicted. I, I can put down the phone at, at, at will whenever I need to. And that's fantastic. And then there may be some of you who, you know, is like, I think I might be addicted. So here's what I'm going to share with you some tips um, or some signs, I should say, and symptoms of internet addiction. And basically, you might be able to get a better idea as to whether or not you're leading in that direction. 
So, firstly, if being on the internet for far too long interfere with your work and studies, so that's definitely something that we have to be cautious about. Uh, if it is that um, you know you're on the internet too much and you're unable, you know, to finish your work, so that's definitely one sign that you know you might be using the internet a little too much. What about neglecting family and friends? Do you find yourself sitting in your room, just kind of away from everyone else and coming down maybe just to have food? <laughs> um, you know, neglecting people very close to you um, and not having conversations with them on a regular basis. Uh, you know, um, that might also be another telltale sign. What about this? Do you find yourself being happy on the internet most of the time, but once you're actually not online, you're a little sad and depressed and angry and agitated, and you really just want to get back online? Uh, that's, that's also um, a very, very strong sign, um, you know, about, you know, getting close to internet addiction. And how about this one? Because I've experienced this one numerous times, right? That you lie about the amount of time you spent online. And not just about the amount of time, but what you're actually doing. And this is an interesting one because over the last few months, most of you, most of you were forced to actually go to school online and sit behind a laptop or a phone or a tablet and do your learning. And chances are that same device that you were learning on is the same device that you probably also play on as well, right? So you might have the games installed there and the social media apps installed there and it's really, really easy to get distracted. So you have to be very, very careful as to, you know, I need to focus on my work now. And then maybe later on this afternoon, I could, you know, play some of those games or get on those apps, right? Um, so not being honest to yourself, uh, not being honest to your parents and the teachers about what you're doing on the internet when you're supposed to be doing schoolwork and so on, right? That's also another sign of, of, of internet addiction. And in and any sort of addiction on the whole, you would have folks who, you know, might not say the truth about the use of the particular substance. Now here's an interesting one, distorted reality. Because sometimes, you know, you know, we may be looking at different social media accounts. And this one, I want to draw reference, not, all, not only to the girls, but also to the boys, because I know that many of you would follow some of these celebrities, you know, uh, these different social media platforms. So for example, you may follow them on Instagram or Snapchat, or TikTok, and uh, you know they may present a particular lifestyle. Uh, they may be showcasing you know all of the latest clothes and phones and everything you know that's you know high life and expensive and so on. Um, and you may start to think to yourself, well, why don't I have those things? So the interesting thing about that is most of those celebrities, if not all of them, are actually paid to do what they do. So that's not their reality in a sense. That's the that's that's their profession. So they're actually paid to showcase, you know, all of these nice brands. These brands give these items to them. Um, all a celebrity has to do is put on a pair of shoes, and you know, the rest of the world will probably want to get that. And 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 they probably won't ever wear that shoes outside for that adult, you know. Um, so it's a it's a distorted sense of reality. So that's one aspect of it. But the stronger aspect of it that I want to refer to today is that of self-image. And uh, many boys and girls might be looking at, you know, certain individuals on, 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 on these platforms who may be looking really, really nice, you know, have very fit bodies, you know, all the all latest styles, fantastic makeup and so on, and thinking, wow, every single picture that they post up is so perfect. Why can't I be like that? And that's something that you know you have to be really aware of. They are not taking the pictures themselves. They have a crew that take that photo, and then they're gonna have another person who's gonna take the picture and edit it and touch it up and make it perfect. And it's not the reality, but it's that created reality. Uh, so don't believe everything that you see on these social media platforms and profiles because it could lead to a little bit of depression. You know, it could it and it is, in my opinion, and in many others. Um, a distorted sense of reality. So you need to bear that in mind, particularly when, you know, following some of these accounts. And there are some folks who they literally just go on the internet to follow these, these, these celebrities. And, and, you know, they hope to be exactly like them. 
But remember that their reality is not what is always being displayed on these social platforms. Now, here's another one that's really, really important. And I'm almost certain that everyone here who may have an inclination of being addicted to the internet might be affected from this. And that is disrupting your sleep. Now, it's really, really important that we get sleep. Sleep is, is, is so critical. It's, it, it, it helps you, uh, you know, keep alert, stay fresh in the morning, and, you know, get you really prepared for a good long day of, of, of work or play. And when we take that away from our natural cycles, it's going to make things so much more difficult. You can't focus and concentrate on your work, especially if you're waking up in the wee hours of the night. Um, you know, to, to look at particular, you know, social media stuff or even playing games. Um, now, if you take a, a closer look at this particular picture, you're going to see that this young lady is looking at a laptop screen and there is this light that's shining on her face and everywhere else is dark. Yeah. So this is probably what happens when you're in your bedroom. Um, and the lights are off and you have your mobile phone and you're looking at that phone and everywhere else is dark and it's just this bright light in front of your eyes. Now think of this, you know, you come down to the end of the day, you may have had your dinner and you, you're in your bed and it's, you know, maybe eight, nine o'clock or 10 o'clock at night and your body is telling itself, all right, it's time for me to go and take a little rest. I need to sleep. And then you lie down. And, you know, you get that notification on your phone, which just so happens to be very close by. And you pick up that phone and you look at it. And now you have this bright light and they call it a blue light that's emanating from your phone. And your body is now being told, hey, um, am I supposed to be sleeping or am I supposed to be waking? Because that's the effect that this bright light from the phone has on your body. It actually makes you think that, hey, maybe I'm supposed to be awake now. So when you think that you might just be spending a couple minutes to check those, you know, notifications, um, you end up spending a couple hours. And before you know it, it's probably midnight or even after that. And you've been looking at this light on that phone or that screen for such a long time. And it's definitely going to be very, very difficult, sometimes near impossible for you to just simply close your eyes when you put that phone on and go to sleep. Because, not just because of the light, but because your body is being tricked into thinking, well, hey, maybe it's time to get up because it's light. It's probably, you know, that's probably the sunrise. Um, so it's called your circadian rhythms and it's, 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 it's being disrupted when you utilize these devices in the dark. So here's a trick because parents and teachers uh, who are sitting on here I know that regardless of how many times we say this, um, chances are, you know, uh, the students might still, you know, pick up that phone in the middle of the night. So here's a trick. If it is that you're using a mobile phone, when you are actually looking at it late in the night, many of the phones actually have a camera um, in the back, which would have a flash or a flashlight. So try putting on the flash or flashlight while you're looking at the the screen in the night. Um, what that does, it creates an ambient light um, around the screen and it really relaxes your eyes and it helps you to, you know, just look at the screen and not, you know, sort of change those, you know, natural body rhythms to one to one sleep. It's not a, uh, an absolute solution, but it does help when you're ready to actually turn this, the phone off and go to sleep. Your eyes are not as strain as without the light. And speaking about strain, there are other things that could happen, right? Um, you can start getting headaches or eye pain, back pain. Some folks might even start to put on weight. So all of these are telltale signs that you know maybe you are on the device too much, probably having a little bit of internet addiction, um, and you know really spending a, a far too much time. Um, I can actually show you how you know you could you could you could lose um, a whole uh, you know. Um, month in just a fortnight, right? And there's a pun on that one, right? So if we were to look at this slide, for those of you who are familiar with the game Fortnite, let's just say for argument's sake that, you know, we're spending two hours a day playing games on Fortnite, right? So that's just about 28 hours in 14 days or a fortnight. And we could round that off to one day. 
So approximately, you know, two days every month, that two full days every month that we're just sitting down playing this game, which is just about 24 days in a year. And that's, you know, that's, that's probably just about a month um, minus the weekend. So there you go. You would have lost a whole month, you know, in a fortnight uh, by just playing only two hours a day. And I'm sure many of you here sitting in probably saying two hours, I probably, you know, spend far much more time than that on the internet. So if these figures do resonate with something that, you know, you might be close to, then, hey, you know, I think we might be spending a little bit too much time on the internet. And when we spend too much time on the internet, you know, we can't get away from it. Um, so let's not be that person because we tend to let our guards down. And, you know, uh, particularly for this group and, you know, the upper school that I'll be speaking about tomorrow, uh, speaking with tomorrow. Um, this generation, uh, you do a lot of things on the internet, right? You learn, you work, you play, but, you know, very importantly, you also build relationships on the internet. So I've, 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 I've seen instances where, you know, teens meet friends online. They may date friends online. And they may even break up with friends online. And you know what? You would have never, ever even met face to face. And it's a real thing. And this is just, you know, the culture of what happens now. When you're in these type of online relationships, however, don't let your guard down. Again, remember, you know, I would have showed you those previous slides because I want you to understand that you utilize the internet and these apps so much and so often that you kind of forget that you're on the internet. You're probably just thinking that I'm just going about my regular duties and not really understanding that some of the things that you do, some of the things that you share may not only be shared or seen by that person that you are engaging with. So let's take WhatsApp, for example. Uh, you might be in a WhatsApp group and that group might have you know, five or 10 people in it at most. And you're thinking, okay, fine, you know, I could share that image with, 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 with that group or even with that one other person. And you know what? Once you actually share that photo or video or make that comment in that digital space, whether it is WhatsApp or Messenger or any of your other chat tools, there is a very high possibility that it will probably reach where it's not supposed to. So if you've actually posted a picture or share a picture with someone that you know um, you really should not have. Chances are someone else who wasn't intended to see it might actually see it. And that's a, a, um, a classic example of cyberbullying where someone might take something that's personal to you and share it with an audience that it wasn't intended for. Um, it could probably even lead far down to the extent of extortion where uh, again, through cyber safety and many experiences that, you know, would have been brought to, to my table where a person would have shared, you know, a, a very intimate picture with someone else. And, you know, they decided, that person decided, hey, I am going to actually keep on asking you to send me more pictures because if you don't, I'm then going to expose, expose you on the internet. And that's something that, you know, we have to be extremely aware of. So, these are all things that could affect our digital footprint. And I want you to keep that term just, uh, just at the back of your minds, because I'm going to explain, you know, a little bit more into your digital footprint. But while we are speaking about all of these uh, methods in which, you know, bad things can happen to you, I also want to, you know, let you know about proper etiquette and, you know, how to ensure that some of these, you know, bad things don't, don't necessarily happen and, and, and you are not um, someone that would actually engage in these type of activities. So I'm almost certain that many of you here know of the golden rule and the golden rule really also applies on the internet. And it's, you know, just in the same way, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Basically, if you wouldn't speak to that person, uh, you know, in that way, face to face, then you really should not do it online. Um, and, and that's a, a telltale sign of, you know, a cyber bully, you know, um, they tend to hide behind the guise of the, of the screen and the laptop or the phone, uh, but they would never, ever do something like that face to face. Um, so just 
think to yourself, you know, um, should I be saying this, you know, because it's, it's something that I would tell someone, you know, in their face. Um, and, and, you know, we really have to be mindful of the golden rule uh, once we're on the internet. So an, another tip here, you know, is think before you post, um, you know, always review what it is that you have to say. And we did mention, you know, private photos and so on, but there are other information, bits of information that, you know, you should keep personal and keep, you know, particularly your personal information private. Um, this just gives someone more fuel to attack you for want of a better word. And, you know, there are actually some really malicious individuals out there who would look at all of your different social media platforms uh, wherever you have information and build a comprehensive profile on you and they can even you know almost have a uh, an identity theft situation where they pretend to be you on the internet so you know they may probably use your pictures and create a fake profile and so on and pretend to be you and that's a classic example of cyberbullying in cases like that, different countries would have different mechanisms in which you can actually deal with those things. However, all the platforms also have mechanisms to deal with those things as well. So whether it is Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, um, you can report a profile if you believe that it's a fake profile and it's doing something that you know it really should not be doing. So that's one takeaway that you can that you can note if in the event that you are in a situation where you know um, your identity is compromised or someone is using a fake profile and saying things uh, and makes it seem as if it's saying from it's coming from you uh, you can report that profile and have your friends report the profile as well and m m most of the times these social media platforms they take these things down another tip of being online is you know uh, don't post things when you're angry or emotional and, and this and this even you know, goes down to not just posting on social media, but also sending emails and so on. Um, you, you, you may say something that you might regret and it could end up, you know, coming out as a cyberbullying attack um, when really and truly it's just your emotions, right? And, you know, I'm sure face to face, you know, you could tell somebody something and then, you know, go back and apologize, you know, a few minutes after say, listen, I was really sorry, I was angry. And you know what, in a, in a couple hours after that, everyone forgets, but that's the difference with the internet. Uh, it, no one ever forgets. And there are things like screenshots and shares and so on that, you know, record these things forever. So you might go on the internet and post up something bad and, you know, it might be a, a cyberbullying attempt. Um, and then, you know, you think to yourself, I really made a mistake and you, you go onto your profile and you delete it or you go back onto that person's profile and you know you apologize and you delete it thinking that okay well it's going to disappear and it's no longer going to be available but someone will probably screenshot it somebody will probably save it and it'll chance that it'll probably be here to to, to to haunt you for for the rest of you know your online life and it's not something that you want to have so you know really think before you post and don't post or send emails or write comments, you know, when you are angry or emotional, it, 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 it does help. You know what, and even if you're angry and you're trying to make a point across uh, a little bit of etiquette when it comes to using the digital divide is, you know, don't use ca all caps when you're writing, you know, these type of messages. Um, even if you, for example, speaking to um, a teacher in an email, you know, you really would not want to write that full email in all caps because uh, it, it sort of indicates that you're shouting when you send something in all caps um, and it's, 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 not a, it's not a good thing to do. It's not a nice habit to have. Um, so there are other ways of highlighting text. You can bold the text or put it in a different color. There is no need to actually put it in all caps as well. So all of these things, you know, that, that we're speaking about, you know, how to conduct yourself on the internet, um, what to share, what not to share, uh, you know, what to like, uh, what to upload, they all form part of your digital footprint. And, you know, I would have mentioned this before. Um, and yet your digital footprint is extremely important. Uh, whether we like to accept it or not, our entire lives are being recorded, right? Everything that we do on the internet, you know, there is some recording of it somewhere. Um, has anyone in the audience here ever Googled your name? 
right? And that might be something that you might want to try, you know, um, and, and if you're from a particular country and you, you know, you may have a very common name, just put your country name right after. So, you know, say you can actually Google Darren Dory Trinidad. Um, and, you know, uh, you would see what information comes up about you and you might be surprised. I don't know. Um, you know, you, you, you're, you're a bit early in the game. However, by, you know, uh, in, in a few years time, when you get into upper school or, you know, as in, in, in our case, form five, form six, just before you need to go to university, you might be extremely, extremely surprised as to the amount of data that was collected about you and saved on the internet and, and, and now forms what is your digital footprint. So why is this important? So if there are, you know, uh, folks in the audience who have aspirations of, um, you know, maybe going to university um, abroad, for example, uh, it is a very um, common feature that admission offices in universities, they Google their, their, their prospective students to see whether or not, you know, they are of the caliber that, you know, the student says they are. Even worse yet, if you're in line for a scholarship, your digital footprint can play a very, very important role in either you getting or not getting that scholarship. So you have to be extremely mindful as to what it is you say. You don't want to be that cyber bully. You don't want to be that person that's, you know, uploading all of those really, really harmful comments and hateful comments and hate speech in particular, um, because these are things that are recorded about you and they form part of your digital footprint. So we have to be very, very mindful about what we post up um, and uh, it becomes part of, you know, our online resume as, 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 as you know, I have told some of the older students. Um, so everything that you post up, everything that you share, you know, can be used against you. So how, how do we deal with that? We ensure that, you know, we, we, we do a lot of positive things. We post up a lot of positive messages, helpful messages. Um, you know, speak about, you know, your community service, your outreach, things you'd have done at school, projects and so on. So I'm definitely not telling you to stay away from the internet. That's, that's the last thing. That's actually not even part of my message. I want you to utilize the internet. I want you to be part of it. And I want you to do it in a very, very positive way so that your digital footprint will be something that you are extremely proud of to share with anyone. So when they Google your name, they say, wow, this is a, an outstanding individual, a fantastic citizen. Um, and, you know, they, they, that might be somebody who I want to, you know, accept into my university or even, you know, um, get a job with. Because not only university admissions officers would Google you, you know, before they engage with you. Uh, many employers might also do the same thing as well. So I have this slide here that, you know, kind of speaks about bullying in general, but it compares, you know, traditional bullying as, you know, we may have known it for a few years ago to cyberbullying as, you know, what we might see today. And cyberbullying, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so much more dangerous, uh, but what we realize is that at the end, both of them cause serious long-term damage. So traditional bullying, you know, it, it probably has to happen face-to-face -face and more than likely it'll probably happen in the schoolyard, you know, or just right outside. And for all intents and purposes, it'll probably only happen during school during the day, yeah? The good thing about that type of bullying is, you know, you might feel a little bit safe at home because, you know, you're at home, you're, you're, you are away from the person. Um, and, you know, because it's a physical act, you actually know who, who may have caused that, 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 that act on you. They can be found and probably punished. And then now let's turn that page to cyberbullying. So cyberbullying, anyone can sit behind a screen and pretend to be whoever, you know, they want to be. Um, so they're essentially anonymous. And that, that's one of the first things that, you know, you would want to be very aware, aware of is that not everyone might be who they say they are on the internet. All right. And the next couple of slides, and I, I do have a little activity that I want to share with you just to kind of show you how dangerous that can actually be. But back to cyberbullying, see, the thing is it can actually happen anywhere because all you need is an internet connection. Yeah. Whereas regular bullying, you need a physical place. Cyberbullying, it can happen anywhere, anytime. And the really unfortunate thing about it is, is that you can't run away from it. Uh, every time you open up that laptop or that phone or go on social media, you might see or be reminded of, you know, that particular event. 
And I'm sure many of you would have seen instances, you know, within your own spheres, within your, your own networks of folks, companies, businesses that might have been, you know, the um, end effect of uh, a cyberbullying attack. And it's really difficult sometimes for a person to overcome it. Um, I've seen so many instances where, you know, um, students just like yourself being a victim of cyberbullying and really and truly unable to overcome this particular act. Uh, you know, they, they become so depressed, you know, they, uh, you know, they drop back in their schoolwork, um, they, they lose their friends. And, and, and folks, I mean, there have been instances where students have, you know, um, gone all the way out and, you know, they start to hurt themselves uh, you know, and it, and it could get, you know, extremely, extremely sad um, and serious. So we, we really can't, you know, encourage or be part of cyberbullying uh, because the repercussions, you know, it's far much more, far, far, far much more serious than, you know, traditional bullying. Um, so something as simple as, you know, typing um, a statement in a chat or making a comment can really hurt someone and you really never know how much pain you might be causing someone. It might sound like a joke to you, but to someone else, you know, it could be extremely, extremely um, painful. And a cyber bully can come in so many different forms. It does not have to be, you know, your classmate. Um, which brings me to this next slide, which, you know, brings up the topic of grooming, right? Um, and I thought that it was important that we mention it because, you know, we're on the internet and we're engaging in communication with, with people all over the world. Um, you know, look, just today, you, just this morning, I'm speaking, uh, you know, to, to students in so many different Caribbean countries. Um, you might be on social media or on a gaming platform that, you know, that has um, online chat. And you might be you might be chatting with someone who might has a, a screen name of you know um, young guy twenty seven you know and, and that's just his screen name or a real cool screen name you know that you know you, you found is really nice but really and truly you don't know that it's an old guy you know in a, in 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 a black hat sitting behind you know an old computer speaking to you and you know they actually may be trying to lure you into something that you shouldn't be doing. Um, there are things such as, you know, human trafficking, which takes place online, and especially when we let our guards down. So remember that that was the genesis of the start of this conversation, that we become so engrossed in using these devices that we often let our guards down. So someone might come on the internet and, you know, they may befriend you and they may be telling you all really nice things or, or ever so often. And you tend to believe them, you know, because those are the things that you want to hear. Um, but, you know, it could have really adverse effects. Uh, so, you know, we really have to be extremely cautious um, as to who we look at, uh, who, sorry, who we share information with and, you know, really and truly, you know, what we do. If someone, you know, starts asking you for very personal information, I think that's a red flag. You should make a report to your parents or teachers. Definitely don't accept gifts from someone on the internet, strangers on the internet. And these gifts can actually be you know, digital gifts, if someone wants to buy you V-Bucks, for example, you know, and you don't know who that person is, it might sound like a nice gesture, but more than likely there may be an ulterior motive behind it and you have to be extremely, extremely cautious. So I just want to uh, st um, stop my share for a bit and I want to go into a little bit of uh, um, an activity. So just to show you how advanced the technology is, is uh, these days. This is me, this is my original picture. Um, and so far we have been, uh, you know, um, seeing Darren Dory for that particular individual. What about if you want to remove my beard? And just like that, you know, I can look a few years younger and there is no beard. And where did it go? You know, where did it go? Um, so here's the thing. Uh, that was a little too easy, right? And, you know, 
almost immediately you cannot tell that you know this is this is not who i am right so you know we we we, we could put back the beard um however however this is the most scary part what about if i find a way to speak a little lighter and no i might look like this absolutely completely different than the original right um and unfortunately i don't have that opportunity to, 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 to change my voice at this point in time but there are apps that i can use to make me sound like i am absolutely totally someone different so you have to be so cautious about what you do on the internet and with whom you're engaging with because you really never know what that person looks like right so i'm sure you all had a very very good laugh at darren looking like a girl and with no beard and yes it was funny but really and truly i want you to understand that on the internet someone can, can you know absolutely uh, pretend to be someone else and this is not just by chatting alone but it is actually you know um, by using the technology. So you could be having a video chat with someone and thinking, hey, I know who you are, but do you really? Yeah. So we're coming down, you know, close to the end of, of, of the slides here. And I thought that, you know, it would be remiss of me if I didn't speak um, to you guys on this new way of learning that we have engaged in. Um, in particular, you know, online classrooms, there are so many different tools, you know, Google Classroom, Google Meet and Zoom and Teams and you name it, there are so many things. Um, and, you know, it's really good for us to, as we spoke about social media etiquette, that, you know, you have good classroom etiquette as well. Uh, you know, and we would have shared the rules when we began the presentation this morning. But... I'm, I must say that, you know, I'm very, very happy with how this audience has um, attended the session so far and every single one of you all, you know, uh, abide by the rules. So I think that this might be a, a mute point. So you can definitely give yourselves a round of applause for, you know, turning off the audio and, you know, um, honoring, you know, the, you know, the, the game. Um, you would notice on my video that, you know, I have a, a pretty neat background with my name and so on. And that's something that you might want to do because in your household, you know, you might not be in a particular space that, you know, the background is okay to show. So, you know, utilizing these nice video backgrounds kind of help to kind of, um, you know, hide anything that might be happening uh, in the background. Um, and that might be distracting to, you know, other students in the chat as well. Um, one thing that, you know, I, I like to mention is if you're having an exam, I think you should let the, the folks in your house know that you're having an online exam. That way, you know, at least maybe the noise in your house might not be that, that much and you might be a little bit more prepared. Um, and on that note of preparedness, ensure that, you know, your battery for your device or your laptop or phone is, you know, is charged up or plugged in. I would recommend that it's plugged in. And because we're on the internet so often, you know, um, sometimes our internet connection might not be that great. So if you know you have a very big day ahead of you, a lot of online exams, or you have to sit in on ex classes for an extended period, uh, I recommend to reset your, your internet routers, you know, just unplug it for a few seconds and then plug it back in. So it, you know, it almost clears the cache and it, it, it gets it back into a particular state where you'll probably not have too much internet related issues. And that works wonders. To be honest with you, I actually had to do that this morning um, just before I started the presentation today. And of course we have to pay attention. It's so difficult for us to lose focus, especially when we have the same device that we're using to work and play. So I would have shared this before. Um, and I wanted to share another uh, website with you all as we are speaking about, you know, being on the internet and, 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 and learning online. Um, many of us here probably never knew or learn how to type or type fast. Uh, you know, some of us probably just do that same one finger type of typing thing. Um, and you wouldn't believe how easier it is for you to actually send out an email much faster. Um, and it would take away from, you know, you having to focus on typing, but just, you know, instead focus on the, 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 the actual assignment. So this website, typing.academy, 
Um, there are many free resources and it, 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 it helps you to, to learn to type really fast. And, and there are many like it, but this is one that I've used that seemed to work really well. Now, the last three slides that I'm about to share has to do with email um, because it, it's also part of etiquette and it's also falls under cyberbullying because, you know, sometimes you might send an email that might sound really, really rough and harsh, um, but, you know, you have to kind of understand the guidelines in terms of, you know, how to send an email properly. Um, so other than, you know, social media etiquette, this, this uh, online etiquette of sending emails is something that's really important. So you want to be very, very detailed in your email. You know, you want to explain why it is you're sending out these emails. Make sure you use a subject line that, you know, kind of indicates what it is your email is about. Have good manners in your email and, you know, kind of write your signature. So I will um, share this particular slide, you know, with the Institute and they could put it up on their Facebook page so you guys could, could, could refer to it later on. But I have two examples. So this is a bad example of an email, you know, um, the subject just says assignment and the body of the message is, I can't find the assignment. You gave it class. Can you send me a new copy to I? So, okay. I think we understand what needs to be done here. You know, there is uh, so many rules that were broken in, in, in actually trying to send a proper email to a teacher. So here's a better example of really and truly what should be done. You know, you start with, you know, proper salutations, you know, dear Mr. Jones, uh, this is Darren Dore from, you know, which form and I'm in the maths class. And, you know, you know, they, you, you explain, you, you check your notes, it's not there. And, you know, you, you, you politely ask, you know, what would, you know, uh, would it be possible to, to send me that, you know, that, that assignment and the subject. So the subject is important because uh, your teachers will probably be receiving um, so many emails on a daily basis. And all they might see on their device is, you know, who it's from and the subject. And if the subject, you know, can actually give them an idea that, hey, this is a probably a, a really important matter, um, you know, requesting assignment, uh, you know, they may look at it with expediency and respond to you accordingly. So I just thought I would have included those little tips uh, for sending email because I've been told on numerous occasions by many teachers that, hey, you know, students, you know, they, they, they don't know how to send an email. So here are, you know, some, some quick tips in uh, email etiquette. So this last slide, um, this is actually available on my website, cybersafett.com, and it's a, it's a comprehensive look on uh, at being safe on the internet. It it speaks about social safety, that's your, your your social media safety, hardware safety in terms of protecting your device, and information safety, um, which would basically be you know keeping your online privacy, keeping your information safe. And there's so many things that we can speak about here, you know, in just these ten tips that it's going to be impossible for us to go through all of them. But this website, cybersafety.com, and that address, 10 top online safety tips, you can um, get more information there. You can actually download uh, a printable version of, of these tips and keep it handy. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of information here, you know, about staying safe on the internet. So with that, it actually brings us to the end of the conversation for today. And, uh, you know, I must say again, Thank you for being such a wonderful audience. I am looking at the chat and I'm seeing over 100 messages. So I'm clearly, clearly things are quite engaging. Um, I'm going to leave this screen up for a short bit and maybe probably go to the chat and see if there are any particular questions, um, you know, that, that, that we need to, to address. Uh, but at this point,